Okay. All right. We're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech on a given Thursday morning, and we have the honor of Bob Guerrier, uh, and he is the president of Pacific Forum. And if you didn't know about Pacific Forum, you need to know about Pacific Forum. We're going to know more about Pacific Forum in a little while. It's a, it's a local but global think tank uh, right down the block in downtown. It's a remarkable organization with remarkable resources and a very high level of global thinking right here in Honolulu. So if you're concerned about global awareness, it lives at, at Pacific Forum. Hi, Bob. Hi, great to be with you this morning, Jay. Thanks for having me. Great. Can you talk a little bit about Pacific Forum and how it was organized and what it does? I think people need to know about that. Sure, thanks. You know, great opportunity, by the way, to have this chat this morning. So Pacific Forum, uh, now formally called Pacific Forum International, we were formed 45 years ago, and we were stood up by uh, our, our founder, uh, is uh, recently passed, uh, Rear Admiral Joe Vasey. And, and his vision, in a nutshell, was really to, quote, find a better way. You know, this, is, uh, this comes out of his stories from World War II when he was uh, pinned down in a submarine. Uh, his, uh, his captain, his skipper at, at that time was, uh, was John McCain, uh, John McCain's father. And uh, it's a great story and, and, and in a particularly harrowing event, uh, he, uh, when, when they actually escaped you know, with their lives, he said to himself, if I ever get out of this thing alive, boy, I gotta find a better way. He finished out his career in the Navy, retired as a rear admiral, uh, and then he founded Pacific Forum. And uh, for many years, again, that's 45 years ago, that 1975 was when we were stood up. Uh, we had a partnership with CSIS, probably the largest think tank in the world. Uh, just in 2018, we, we uh, became completely independent. And so now uh, we've always been operating here in downtown Honolulu, right there in Bishop Square. And so, uh, yeah, I, I'd love to get into all the details. Uh, but we've been around. It's all it's a nonprofit, nonpartisan, uh, private uh, think tank. And I like to think of it as Hawaii's own private think tank because it is. It is absolutely. Uh, you know, I've I've gone to your board of governors meetings um, in the spring uh, for several years, and I've always been impressed with the kind of people who are there, the kind of people, the kind of national people. Uh, Joseph S. Nye Jr. of the Kennedy School of, uh, I guess, what foreign relations uh, out of Harvard, uh, spoke there several times. Uh, you've had you've had amazing speakers, and you've had amazing people to come and watch. And there's a lot of military, a lot of uh, foreign service. Uh, it's it's really um, it's a it's a hot spot for global thinking, and, and as I said before, we really need that. So the question is, what do you cover, Bob? I mean, what what is your sort of range of intellectual uh, geography? Well, I think um, yeah, you know, I, I think of it as geopolitics, probably uh, writ large, but but very 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 specifically, we focus on the Indo-Pacific. I mean, uh, quite literally. Uh, and uh, you know it starts with Northeast Asia and it goes down into uh, into Southeast Asia and then we're growing and branching into South Asia of course with, with this whole realization that the Indo-Pacific is, is a much larger entity than just, just Asia by itself. Uh, so so that's the region you know all the way west from here all the way past to, to, uh, to India. Um, so, so that's that's the backyard so to speak and, and the types of things that we get in, involved in our regional engagement programs, strategic stability, security cooperation, a thing called preventive diplomacy, which is getting countries to talk before you get into uh, crisis situations, non-proliferation and disarmament, uh, strategic trade controls. And then we have a whole separate uh, line of effort with, which is about young leaders and, and the next generation. And we spend a lot of time, and I hope we have a few moments later to talk about that because we've got fellowship programs that are very active and vibrant. And again, a young leaders program, which is uh, one of our flagship programs. We stood this up, gosh, 14 years ago, of probably one of the first institutions to do that. Lots of think tanks are actually copying that model. Uh, over a thousand young leaders now across 56 countries, a wonderful network. These are all aspiring young security practitioners. And then they're getting smart about, about policy, but we invite them to sit in on our conferences and our dialogues so they get to see how policy is made, how, how it's being crafted by the experts, by the government officials. And so that, that really, it, it removes the mystery for them and it really empowers them to continue on with their studies. So we can get into any of those areas, but as you said- They're extraordinary. People, these, yeah. these people are extraordinary. They're young, they're international. <clears throat> they wanna know everything about everywhere. Um, yes. 
you know, politics is their middle name. But, you know, it, it, hearing you talk about that, it strikes me that you must have been, you must now be uh, profoundly affected by COVID. Uh, can you talk about how COVID has affected your operations and your reach into Indo-Pacific? Absolutely. So, you know, our, our, our main, you know, we, we, we do three things, you know, and just to back up a little bit, you know, we research, you know, topics of interest that are, that are current, that have been out there for a while, that are also emerging. And we connect people in a variety of ways, and then we inform. And, and that, that, that's you know, it's a bit of a moniker, though, those three steps. But it's really, so the researching continues nonstop. You don't have to be able to travel to do that. The connect pieces is what we had to become very innovative, like every other think tank out there. We often could, we connect virtually like we're doing now. And I'll talk about how we've changed our, our, our modes and we continue to, to work. But in the past, we, we, and we will resume these, um, we would hold dialogues and workshops and seminars uh, all over the, uh, the Indo-Pacific. You know, in, in 2019, my gosh, we, uh, we had something along the lines of, um, gosh, I, uh, I want to say um, 60 different events. Uh, and it was uh, in 21 different cities in, in 12 countries. So there's a lot of physical travel involved. Uh, and, and so that's 2019. So then with, with the COVID uh, uh, situation coming early this year, we obviously had to, to curtail that and, and rapidly adapt again, like everyone else. So in, in what we do now is uh, we, we hold virtual workshops using, using the same platform, Zoom, uh, or, or whatever the, the, the host co countries uh, or recipients are comfortable with, but often it's Zoom. And so we're now doing seminars, uh, a variety of them. Some are by invitation only that are very focused. Others are very broad. Uh, we've got a maritime discussion series that focuses on lots of the issues in the South. Saw China that State. on your website. That's a very interesting series and very relevant right now. And that, you know, we've had, you know, you know, a little less than 200, uh, you know, 150 plus uh, attending those regularly from all over the globe. I mean, literally, we try to pick a time, a time frame, advertise in advance. But, you know, yeah, I've got folks from Europe, uh, all across Indo-Pacific. Uh, but Great Britain, the Netherlands, uh, uh, even in South America, as well as all the countries in the Indo-Pacific, are dialing in to listen about, you know, our discussions on law of the sea, on, on South China Sea, and what's happening there uh, with, with, with fishing vessels, with coast guards, with the Chinese Navy, Nine Dash Line, all these issues. And it's an opportunity for experts, academics to, to talk. We typically have panel discussions, maybe three panelists and then a moderator yeah. go for an hour, hour and 15, they really usually... And it's a great discussion. So we have that series, uh, and 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 again, a couple others. We did a COVID series, special series. I can talk about that in a second if you'd yeah. like uh, here in Hawaii. Well, I, I wanted to. I just uh, want to sort of um, examine the network. I mean, from what you say, it sounds like this is more than just a bunch of guys sitting around and and researching. More than just a bunch of guys uh, reading newspapers from faraway places. Um, you have to be out there. Uh, and and in, in the in 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 the normal uh, just a year ago, um, Pacific Forum was traveling uh, r remarkable uh, distances everywhere. Yes. Um, uh, your your predecessor uh, Ralph, um, uh, what was it last name? Casa Ralph Casa, and he's our president emeritus, and he's still on board the staff. He works a a, a very busy schedule, uh, uh, and and he's part of our team. Uh, so it's great to have that network with him with us. He was everywhere. Yes. Ralph, uh, he still was. is. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's it's uh, it seems to me that you know, in order to do what you do, you've got to connect and maintain that that network, and it's a network yes. of relationships. You know, it's Absolutely. like they say, real estate isn't about land; it's about relationships. As a matter <laughs> of fact, when you think about it, everything is about relationships, including what you do. So you have to nurture those relationships wherever they are, and you're going to do that mostly in the past by travel. Yeah. You got it right. I, I couldn't say it much better at all. Uh, honestly, um, it's all about those connections. It's all about keeping them alive, keeping them vibrant. Um, you know, I didn't even get into Southeast Asia, which is a very, you know, that, that's, that's right there at the hinge, if you will, of, of the Indo and the Pacific, you know, uh, when we talk about it uh, and, and how important the ASEAN countries are. Um, we're one of the founding, Pacific Forum is one of the founding members uh, of, of the uh, Council on Security Cooperation in the Asia Pacific, uh, CSCAP. And uh, this has been going on, this, this group of, 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 of representatives from various think tanks with close connections typically to uh, ministries of foreign affairs in the region. Uh, this, they've been meeting on, on a variety of, of, of important issues. 
They typically help inform the ASEAN Regional Forum. So again, this is a deep, there are deep roots here in connections. Uh, these are scholars, they're experts, they're government officials. Uh, they're working in their private capacity. Again, as I said, we're a private, we're not a government entity. Uh, and and you know they're they're reading our publications. We're reading their publications. I mentioned that inform piece. You know that that the triad of things that we do on our website. Uh, you'll see these pack nets that we put out. You know somewhere about eighty plus a year. It's commentary. It's analysis. Well, what's, what's a pack net now? This is this is really important because if you want to be educated, if you're here and watching, uh, you need to know about pack nets. What's a pack net? So our memberships, you just subscribe to actually, and we push these out, anyone can actually get them, but we also have a special memberships that, that, that invite you to additional events here in Hawaii. But these are out and available for everyone. You go to our website uh, and you'll see publications and these pack nets, it's just a, a handle we've been using for, for, for decades now. Think of it as a small uh, a small bite, it, it's, a, it, it's an analysis uh, um, uh, of a topic that's hot. Uh, Indo-Pacific specific, it's foreign policy centric. Uh, we don't get into to, to politics, uh, we get into the, the, the larger issues. I think these issues, you know, and it's not too hard to stay, by the way, um, you know, nonpartisan. These issues, uh, security, I think it transcends politics in so many ways. There'll always be discussions about how you execute, but we, we don't get into that level. We, we, it's a much larger issue of, of the security realities that face all of us, not in just the US, but the entire region. And so these pack nets, again, they're fast reads, and it's a great place to, to, to get caught up on, on issues. And occasionally we'll have a back and forth. Uh, they, they represent the views of the authors. They don't represent the views of, of a specific forum. Uh, we, we want them to be well-researched and, and, and obviously a high standard. Uh, but uh, beyond that, they're out there and occasionally we'll, we'll get a, a counter fire, if you will, and a back and forth. And we encourage that. That's the essence of a, of a forum of discourse. Yeah, and, so, and, and it makes you unique. I mean, I don't, I really don't think there's anybody else in the world who, who writes this up the way you do and covers the ground uh, and Asia and Indo, Indo-Pacific. But let me, let me ask you this, you know, it strikes me that in, in a world where mm, the United States has turned isolationist uh, and nationalistic, um, you know, the outreach that you, that is Pacific Forum has been doing for 45 years uh, must be affected by that. Uh, the relationships we talked about all over Asia, Asia Pacific, Indo-Pacific must be affected by that. People probably have a different view of America and the United States foreign policy than they had um, four years ago. Uh, how how uh, have you seen that and how does it affect your work? Well, we get questions many times. Uh, and when we were traveling again last year and we will travel again, you know, as soon as this, this, this too will pass and then we'll adapt to all of us. Uh, globally, uh, but but it, in our discourse, in our meetings, there's always questions. You know, are, are you still vested in the region? Do, do you care about allies and partners? And the answer is, of course, we are. I like to think of it, and often I would respond. Um, you know, how politics is often a pendulum. You know this well, uh, and and there's there's going to be tactical styles that, that 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 are different. I think in the end, I said, watch our actions. That's the most important thing. That's the best read always. You may see, you may hear things that are a lot of, you know, rhetorical things, some of it bombastic and, or otherwise. Um, but in the same token, watch what we do, read our documents. There's a, there's a steady undercurrent that's there. And in the end, uh, I think uh, the math of, of, of security, of global security, of, of, a, of a general interconnectedness of all things uh, really proves that you have to maintain relations. It, it's, it's the obvious, <laughs> to me, it's so logical, but it's the obvious, uh, uh, end game for all of us and tackling you know, problems that confront all of us from global uh, climate issues, from security, from proliferation, uh, from unrest, uh, you name the, the whole, the whole uh, tableau of, 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 of issues, um, the way you get to the bottom of them is, is through dialogue, discourse, uh, and, and common understanding. There's no unilateral solutions to any of these things. In fact, when you go unilateral, you often create more problems that have to get addressed later. So to me, the math is almost there in the logic and, and people, I think, know that. Yeah, well, yeah, I, it reminds me, all this reminds me of the Asia Pacific Center for Security Studies in Waikiki that was established by Dan and Noe, uh, what, a, a couple of decades ago. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, recently, uh, Hank Stackpo, who was uh, one of the early, you know, presidents of that, died. A wonderful gentleman, yes. A wonderful right. guy. 
Uh, so I, I just wonder how you would compare Pacific Forum in this regard with APCSS. Well, I, I, and I'd add East West Center. So um, I, I know the the uh, the director of APCSS is a personal uh, professional uh, Admiral Kiku Matautau. We're, we're personal friends and and uh, and, and uh, spent time together in the Navy. Uh, and Richard Bolstek, uh, of course, at East West Center. So I I'd actually I'd mention all three of us. You know, we're we're small. Um, you know, uh, one has a more State Department backing East West Center. The other is the Department of Defense entity, essentially. Uh, so, so government-sponsored entities. Uh, we're nonprofit and uh, non, you know, private in that regard. But we do we do different things, but we all overlap, and we certainly all talk all the time. And so, um, so think of defense-centric uh, approaches that APCSS. It's their charter. Uh, East West Center, you know, not not defense, you know, it's broader, as you would think along the lines of, of State Department. And then what I always mention to them, because I'm always looking to partner with them in many projects that we have, uh, think of us as, as coming in with a different layer of contact, if you will, uh, the, the, the nonprofit, the non-government approach. And as I mentioned earlier, everything's connected. Uh, you know, even the security world is not just the conventional way you think of aircraft, ships, and, you know, and, and, and those larger militaristic or, or military-related issues. It's that. It's always will be a part of that, but it's, it's economics. It's information. It's, it's how we're connected, it's 5G, it's what you're reading in the paper. And I think everyone understands that this not just whole of government approach, but the whole of nation uh, approach is really the key to, to all manner of issues that are out there. So it's just the, diplomacy, you, isn't it? Yeah, you come at it from different angles. You're uh, all and so, diplomacy, uh, I, I call it think tank diplomacy because of the relationships and the coverage and the general missions of all these three organizations. Uh, I know that East West Center is involved in diplomacy. By the way, they have a show with us, you know, uh, and uh, Korean Alliance comes around, does a, does a show every, every week or two. Um, and further, um, they cover very current issues. Like if they've been on it with the relationship with China. They've been on it with the events in Hong Kong. Um, and, I, and I wonder if, if um, you know, uh, your, your mission is overlapping on that because that, to me, is is is, is hot news, um, and it's very very determinative of our relationships with Asia. I, the, the, yeah, and the answer is yes. I mean, I, I think of it as a complementary approach. Um, you know, we we've uh, we've participated in events with them. We've uh, we've even uh, hosted events using some of their facilities at East West Center. Uh, but the topics that we get into, again, they're all layered, and and, and again, we come at it in a private nonprofit kind of, of angle, and with that. Each of them have their own networks, these groups, and that has an additive effect. So again, we've spent a lot of time on Northeast Asia <clears throat> working trilateral dialogue between the US, Japan, and Korea. Uh, we've, we've hosted a, a track 1.5 dialogue, and I can get into explaining track two and track 1.5 dialogues. I'll look real quickly. Track two is academics and experts, if you will, non-official. Uh, 1.5, I would say semi-official, uh, you know, the track one being, you know, official government, you know, um, um, press meetings and the like, you know, uh, delegations. Uh, so that's a very official, that's what the State Department does. But when they're not talking and, and you want to maybe make headway below the, below the radar, so to speak, quietly, you move to a 1.5, which is halfway between the academic world, which is track two academic and experts. So this 1.5, we often are funded uh, by, uh, by, by typically uh, government institutions uh, in the U.S. Um, for the grants uh, to host these. And they provide a forum off the record, uh, non-official, but with officials who are very well informed, along with academics and experts, very well informed to have discussions with counterparts in China. Uh, for instance, a strategic nuclear dialogue we've had with, with China for many, many years. Uh, this trilateral dialogue amongst our allies in Korea and Japan coming across where there's friction in that relationship. So these are really meaty discussions you have takeaways. Our work is all unclassified, by the way, non-proprietary. Uh, some of it can be sensitive, uh, uh, but but what you do is you make headway in areas that need to be discussed. These are policy alternatives for our officials to consider, and 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 that's how you you help move the ball, so to speak, move the needle on some of these tough issues. Now, these organizations and your organization very important in a time when the State Department has been thinned down. I think everybody tells me that. Uh, where you walk through the uh, the halls of the State Department and half and half the offices are empty, um, and they're not developing foreign policy the way they 
they had uh, classically. It seems it strikes me that your organization is a nonprofit, as a as a foreign policy organization, a think tank, uh, sort of fills in the gaps on that. You you do do diplomacy and you do. Uh, relate to people, and you do keep keep the edge off things uh, where it might be much, much more friction. So uh, I, I think that's a fair a fair analogy. Uh, you know, I, I don't I don't presume to, to to say or to think that we're any substitute for for official diplomacy. We certainly are a complementary additive, uh, another layer of texture, and also as important momentum on a certain important issues. You know, when you're not talking officially, gosh, you, you hopefully you're, you're darn well better be talking unofficially. <laughs> you know, that's how you keep the pressure uh, and, and, and understand what the other folks are thinking. You know, there's, there's lots of things out there where, where, where different sides don't see it the same way. And the way that, that you help untie that knot is, is to understand the motivations behind them. And so, you know, it, it's about insight. It's about, about, about perspectives. And it's about sharing that and understanding motives and then coming up with policy alternatives uh, and recommendations for our side. It's that dialogue which is so important. So that's a lot of what we do in, in this travel. And we're, now that we're adapting this COVID environment that you asked about earlier, we're doing this, uh, again, not as at the same tempo, but it's slowly picking up because what's happening is people realize the ability to hold meetings you know, keeps on getting postponed. They don't want to lose momentum. So how about a workshop? How about getting together? Let's do it virtually. Let's get the discussions on there. What do they want to talk about? Things like that, uh, which, are, which are important, at least to keep the discourse continuing. Yeah, since we started doing, well, we, I mean, everybody started doing these virtual meetings, um, you know, people have sometimes raised the notion that it's not as good as, as in the flesh, that you, you need to, um, you know, have a drink with the individual. You need to spend personal time you need to see the, the sweat of his brow or her brow uh, in these discussions i have come to another conclusion my conclusion is right now Bob, i'm getting to know you better than i might otherwise have gotten to know you and you in turn <coughs> can get to know a diplomat in asia better than you might otherwise and without having to fly out there and it's personal and it's, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's something very candid about the ability to talk privately on, uh, I say privately, I mean, close up um, mm -hmm. on, on Zoom. Do you find that to be true? Is it as good on virtual as it was or has been, uh, you know, in, in a uh, physical meeting? I'll definitely say it's different and it is good. Uh, it's not a substitute uh, entirely, uh, but, it, but there's actually benefits. You know, I, the way we operate, not just Pacific Forum, but I know other think tanks, is changed forever. This is a powerful tool. You've been using it all along with your organization and are really far ahead of all of us. We're, we're kind of catching up, but the power is amazing. Uh, you can now have conferences with, with hundreds, vice just scores, uh, you know, so that there's that reach. You know, I mentioned the global reach, literally global, uh, that, you know, you can have those conferences. It takes a lot of planning and a lot of travel the efficiency that this medium, this platform brings is, is staggering. And, and, and you're right, there's a very focused uh, aspect to it, which, which really pulls you in. It's pretty intense. And so one of the things we learned is you know, when you're doing a, a virtual version of a conference, we typically chop it up into smaller pieces because th these are intense sessions that they're, you're, people are dialed in, you're looking right at them. Uh, and so it's a different atmosphere than sitting in a large conference room, whether it's uh, whether it's a uh, you know, a symposium or even in a smaller space. It's a different dynamic, as you know. So no substitute, of course, for the personal relationships that you get in physical contact, but absolutely there's a personal connection, but then the reach. And then the polling features, there, there's some great technology pieces with chat, uh, with voting, and we're using some of these where you can actually sample the audience and saying, before we start this session, how many people thought X, Y, Z, and you do a poll, and it's anonymous, so people are honest, and then they open up, and you have this data now, and so it actually, that turns back in, if you do it right, it kind of primes the pump for the discussion, so you get a level of actually reach, right, and insight, metrics, that you didn't have in an open forum, you know, with people raising their hand, and maybe they get to you or not, so, so yeah, it's very powerful. It's true, then as time goes by, and people get more familiar with the, uh, you know, the Zoom, and the webinar Zoom, <clears throat> it seems to me we can do more of this, and we will do more of this and we'll all get more expert at the polling and the Q&A and all. 
But let me move to another uh, subject. You know, one thing I've always admired about Pacific Forum is its fellows program. Yeah, thank uh, can you. Can you talk about that? I mean, in my in my in my mind's eye, uh, Bob, I'd like to be a fellow. Uh, but what what is what does it mean to be a fellow? Well, we've got five different programs, fellowship programs right now, both resident and non-resident. So think of a resident fellowship program where, where it's funded and, and you bring someone in and they actually stay with us here in Hawaii for a six month period. Sometimes it gets extended to 12 months. They, they, uh, they, they pick up a topic, it's a collaborative process. You have a mentor from the staff, either a, uh, one of our senior fellows, uh, uh, actually on the staff, a PhD or a PhD candidate themselves, someone who's experienced and they coach them along with their research project. Along the way, they help us do some of our work, so that they're they're on the team, if you will, on board. Uh, we take them to conferences, and so it's this is very rich, immersive experience. Where they do research, but they also see applications of how this research can be used in the world, and so it's a great connection. These are competitive fellowships. Again, then there's a score of non-resident ones as well. We have a, a Vasey, a Kelly, a non-proliferation scholarship, a Honda, a WSD World Support. Uh, Development for Peace uh, uh, um, uh, scholarship or fellowship rather, uh, and a Korea Foundation. Those five uh, different ones. We also have bring on interns uh, during the summer months predominantly. Uh, those are uh, not subsidized, so they come in to study as most interns do. And then, so that that's that's fellowships. Then we have the young leaders, and then a subset of the young leaders is this Asia Pacific Affairs Leadership Program, which is even a younger group, typically undergraduates that are from here in Hawaii. And, and if I could just plug that for a second, because it's a direct, it's a direct reach out to uh, to young, you know, uh, aspiring policy uh, uh, students uh, who want to get a taste of what foreign policy formulation and study is like. That's APAL. That's Hawaii specific, and, and, and we have cohorts. We're in our seventh cohort right now, um, uh, and so you think of ten people that come. In and they work with us as a program that takes a place of kind of like a school year. You bring them in in the fall and they kind of graduate spring, summertime. We invite them to, uh, to one of our conferences uh, so they get to see this, you know, they travel and they get to see how policy is, is formulated and discussed. And it, it's really, it's, it's really important. And they do their projects, this APAL group that, that, that are connected. We, we, we make it a requirement to, to make a Hawaii connection uh, to the region. And this, this lastly, if I could just say, kind of gets to the larger issue of how you think about Hawaii, Honolulu, and the Indo-Pacific. You know, my gosh, it, it quite literally is the gateway for the U.S. to the Indo-Pacific. And we can really deliver on that. You know, Admiral Vasey had that vision 45 years ago. And there's so much more to Hawaii uh, than, than the wonderful things it already has in, in the industries and, uh, and tourism. But there's a richness of, of, of thought, of proximity, a place to meet. You know, there's that aloha and light touch with, with which we bring, but it's a wonderful place to have meetings. We host our, some of our dialogues here as kind of neutral turf, if you will. So all these things, if you will, come together to make Hawaii, you know, you know you're, you're competing with the East Coast and, you know, in a long tradition of think tanks and then BC centric thinking. That's fine. It'll always be that way. But we can really fill this out out here in, in Hawaii. And, and, and we, we really see that role. So uh, Bob, you're, a, you're a, I'm guessing here a 501c3 or a nonprofit. We are, um, yes, indeed. 501c3, nonprofit, fully a nonprofit organization. Tax deductible donations are help us keep going. That's for sure. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, I remember at the uh, board of governors meetings that was a fundraiser, and how is fundraising going uh, in the time of COVID? And um, you know, how can we? How can we make um, your your organization as sustainable as possible in the time of COVID? No, it's a great. Thank you for asking the question. It's uh, so the answer is it's tough. We had a we had a cancel. We first postponed our, our our annual fundraising dinner, and that's that's our biggest fundraiser each year. We really rely on it. We postponed it initially, uh, and then as as you just see that the way things are working, we had to cancel it outright. So we're in a summer uh, giving campaign right now. Uh, every donation helps. Uh, I can simply say, uh, go to our website, www.pacforum.org, and, and there's a giving page in there. Every bit helps. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's again, um, 501c3, uh, fully tax deductible um, donations. It makes a difference, and, uh, and, and, and we need it. Uh, it. It's what supplements our operations. We work on grants, uh, government uh, and private, and then uh, that covers not all of our operating costs. We make up the rest of the shortfalls, as most nonprofits do. 
uh, with, with, with uh, fundraising uh, drives each, each year. So it, it's an ongoing effort. So every bit helps. Well, I, I, I hope people realize that um, we have got to look beyond our own shoelaces here in Hawaii. We've got to see the world, We've got to see our role in the Pacific and Indo-Pacific. We've got to see all the changes that are happening and we have to know about them and even participate them, in them. What a fabulous opportunity it is for students and aspiring foreign service uh, diplomats to, to, to be with you <clears throat> and learn from you. I, I hope people see this and understand it. Uh, so let me, uh, let me ask you one last question, Bob. Uh, speaking to the community now, the Hawaii community, what message would you like to leave with them? What, what would you like them to think about in terms of Pacific Forum? Well, my simple uh, uh, message would simply be, uh, uh, please um, learn about us. Uh, we're here to provide support. Uh, we're big, big supporters of the quote, next generation and helping develop the next generation. You, you read the news uh, and, and many of us uh, are frustrated. Uh, and and, and but the way you get in front of that, the way you solve problems, the, the way you find a better way is, is you teach and you train and you mentor you know, those that are gonna follow behind us. And, and, and that's that next generation. So these are the fellows, these are the young leaders, these are the APAL people that we bring in each cohort each year. These are young folks in their 20s and 30s uh, that, that we're coaching along. And this is how you find a better way. This is how you make the news and the headlines less appalling. Uh, you get involved and we're doing this all here in Hawaii. So please, we look to Hawaii for your support. Uh, we're Hawaii's own think tank. We're private, been here for 45 years and we're trying to make a difference. And we are making a difference, I can tell you that. And our website is a wealth of information. Graduate schools actually use it uh, for, for research for their students. There's a lot in there. Bob Guerrier. Uh, president of Pacific Forum, pacificforum.org. Uh, thank you. Did I get that right? Pacificforum.org. Yeah, yeah. It, it's pacforum.org. Uh, yeah, www.pacforum.org. Uh, uh, but yep, indeed. Thanks for having me, Jay. Really appreciate the thanks chance for, to talk. Thanks for coming around, Bob. Really appreciate it. Uh, the best to you and Pacific Forum. Aloha. Aloha.